Hello everyone, welcome to the latest Nolan Business Solutions webinar. Today we'll be looking at some of the exciting new features included in the latest version of Dynamics GP 2018. The topics covered will range across a number of subject areas and these are system administration, sorting options, document attachments, payment options and then finally workflows. Okay, so looking at the first of these, system passwords. Very handy feature, in my opinion, in this version of GP is the fact that as a system administrator, you now only need to enter the system password once per session. So, even if you exit a security window and re-enter another one, you only have to enter the password once. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to log into Dynamics GP 2018, as I say. And let's say that I go into the user maintenance screen. Now at this point I'm prompted to enter a system password. This is the same as previous versions. So I've entered the password and I have access to the user setup screen. Now, assuming I've done my work in this window, I come out of there and let's say I go into another security window, user security, you will notice that I don't get prompted for the password at this point. In previous versions, you would have to enter the password time and time again. So a very useful feature for system administrators. Okay, moving on. Passwords have also been introduced to your smart list in GP 2018. How often have you created a smart list favourite and made it available to other users only for it to be amended or removed at a crucial time, perhaps just prior to month end or year end? Well, now the layout of the smart list can be password protected, meaning that only trusted users have the ability to amend a smart list. They can of course still be shared with other users, it's just the power to amend those smart lists that can be restricted. Let me show you how this is set in GP. Okay, so if I go into the smart lists, I'll select anyone at all at random. I do whatever amendments and modifications that I want to do, and in the same way that I create a favourite, click on the icon, and you will notice that in the favourite screen, there is a new option at the bottom called password. So I can set my favourites as before, but this time round I enter a password and it means that it's password protected and only those users who have access to the password can make amendments to that favourite. Okay, sorting options. In receivables management, there are now an additional two sorting options available. And these are document amount, and that's the original document amount, and amount remaining, and that's the current outstanding unapplied amount. These additions now give the user much greater flexibility when it comes to inquiring against debtors and debtor transactions. Similarly, and related to the last slide, in payables management, there are also an additional two sorting options, and these are original amount and unapplied amount. If you look at the screenshots on the slides, you can see that all of these options are available from the sort by drop down fields. Okay, so the next category we're going to look at is document attachments. As you probably know, the ability to attach documents is not new in Dynamics GP. The facility has been around for a number of years, but in this latest version, the functionality has now been extended to receivables transactions entry, general ledger journal entry, and asset general information. For anyone who's unfamiliar with document attachments, let's take a look at the receivables entry window and see how document attachments work. Okay, so when we open the screen, the first thing we notice in the ribbon at the top, there is an icon appeared with a paper clip which says attach. Now that tells us that behind that icon, there is another screen that allows us to attach documents to this particular transaction. So let's just get a transaction. Okay. 
Now, you'll notice in this case, in this transaction, the icon has changed to a paper clip with a sheet of paper. Now, that tells us that there is already a document attached to this transaction. So when I click on the icon, I can see in the screen that appears a sample budget, okay, that was entered by user SA on this particular date. Down the bottom of the screen, there is an attach button. When we click on attach, this allows us to browse on a local desktop or on the network to find any further attachments, any further documents that pertain to this particular transactions and we can attach them as we did here, a sample invoice. Within document attachments, we can attach Excel files, Word documents, PDFs, XML files, all the major file attachments. And obviously when we go back into the screen at any time, we can click on preview and we can view those document attachments. Okay, so staying with document attachments, it's now also possible to attach documents to the vendor and creditor inquiry windows. Previously, you would only have been able to view the documents on these screens, and the documents that could have been viewed would have been those documents attached in the corresponding card window. Let me just demonstrate that. Okay, so we're now looking at the creditor inquiry window. Again, we can see that the attach icon is in place, telling us that there is the ability to attach documents. I will select uh, creditor, age travel. Again, the icon has changed, showing that documents are already attached. So when we go into the screen, now previous versions, the preview button would have been visible, but not the attach button, because you would only have been able to view documents that were entered on the, in this case, Ace Travel creditor card. In this version, we can now attach documents at the inquiry stage, and also that they can be seen in the card screen. So it's a two-way process. Documents can be attached at this level and can be viewed on the card level. In addition, uh, there's now a setting on the document attachment setup window where we can switch this option on and off, and if we wish, we can enter a password to restrict access to these documents. To do that, we go to the document attachment setup window. There is a new option here that says allow attachments to be added in the inquiry window. So if we, if we don't want to allow that to happen, we just untick. And if we wish to enter a password to give further protection, we enter the password and we would click OK. OK, so let's move on to the next category, which is payments. In GP 2018, there have been some very useful enhancements to the functionality around payments and payment runs. Now, the first change is mainly a cosmetic one, and that is that the payment menu options have been changed from checks to payments. The reason for this, of course, is that payments do not necessarily need to be done by check. They could also be done by credit card, backs transfer, electronic file transfer, etc. So in light of this, this new generic naming convention makes perfect sense. Okay, so next with payments is the ability to set the payment per creditor or invoice setting at both the creditor level or at batch level. In previous versions, this could only have been set at batch level. Let me demonstrate this on the build payment batch screen. So if we look at this setting here, one payment per, Previously, there would only have been two options here, and it would have been one payment per creditor or invoice, and these would have been global settings for all the creditors contained within the batch. There's now a third option that says use vendor option, and what that means is if the setting is, is, is selected on the screen, GP, rather than applying the global setting, will go to the vendor cards and look at the setting against them. So if we go to... Let's look at our creditor cards. And if we go to the options screen against the creditor, we can see that again, there is a new setting, one payment pair. 
By default, it will be set to creditor, but we have the option if we wish to set it to invoice. And we do this on a vendor by vendor basis. So in this case, if Ace Travel 01 was included in the payment batch and the setting was set to invoice, it would pick up that setting and for that creditor create one payment per invoice. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same setting for all creditors. Okay, so this next feature is, in my opinion, an extremely useful feature. For any users who perform payment runs, they will know that a gap in the functionality in the past has been the ability to store particular batch settings as a template. If you carry out frequent payment runs and use the same settings time and again, then those settings would of course have to be entered time and again. But now, we're able to create what are called payment option IDs, effectively templates, and store them for future use. We can also store multiple payment option IDs. Let's take a look. Okay, the new setting, Payment Option ID. Now, when we drill into this field, we can see that there are a couple that I've set up previously. So, let's say all creditors with a priority of 1 to 2. When we retrieve it back to the screen, you can see that various settings, for example, the payment priorities and all the tick boxes along the bottom have been stored from previous, uh, stored previously and re-retrieved back to the screen. I also have a second option ID, which is creditor A to D, so that's all the creditors within a range that begins with A to D. And of course, we can make changes to these at any time. So if we want to, let's untick returns, and we say select, we say, do you wish to save the changes in this payment option ID? Yes, I do. So that is now the new payment option ID with returns unticked. Very useful, um, very useful for any users who are responsible for performing payment ones. Okay, so moving on to our final category, workflows. For anyone unfamiliar with workflows, they are an extremely powerful method of replicating almost any financial business process in GP and defining various levels of control and approval. A typical workflow will be made up of a number of steps, tasks and approvers. All workflows can also incorporate escalated approvals and email alerts. The new workflows introduced to Dynamics GP in 2018 are receivings entry transaction, purchasing invoicing transactions, and general ledger account entry. I'll be focusing on the workflow around GL account entry. So let's just find that workflow. There we go, GL account entry with all the various steps. Now, a common problem in GP, how often have you experienced when new GL accounts are being entered incorrectly into the system, only to find later that transactions either mispost or fail to post at all because of small errors of detail? Or, how often have you found that your reporting is out because new GL accounts have not been entered into external applications such as Management Reporter? Well, now greater controls can be taken over this entire process with a comprehensive workflow. In my example here, you can see that there are tasks devoted to the entry of the GL account in GP and in Management Reporter, and on top of that, there are approval tasks, so someone has to approve the entry in both the applications. So therefore, the new, the new code cannot be made active within GP until all the conditions of the workflow have been met and approved, thereby ensuring that costly time errors are avoided. Okay, and finally, on workflows, there's now a facility for copying often repeated workflow steps. Previously, the user would have been forced to re-enter the same or similar steps time and time again. But now, with the introduction of the copy button and the ribbon against each step, this removes a lot of the effort involved in this process. So, for example, take this, take this step here. If I wanted to recreate that step, I would just click on copy. I would get this screen here, 
it would ask me to rename the copy and I even get the get the option of including the sub steps if I wish. So I can copy all those steps that sit below it in the hierarchy. Okay, so that completes this brief overview of the many new features of Microsoft Dynamics GP 2018. I do hope that some of these features have been of some interest to you. If you have any questions or require further information on any of these or on further new features, please contact your account manager in the first instance and we'll be happy to oblige. Many thanks for your time today and I hope you all have a great day. Goodbye for now.